It's all right, Arthur. We're going to do this together. Man, I love, I, I don't know, I like listening to songs and then like really listening to what we're saying. Yeah, because I, I kind of got, you know, some songs, you, you get into the robotic mode where you just listen to the song or you go, oh, that's a good jam and you kind of sing it. But the perspective of the song is really right where it came from. Like, what were they saying? It's really like what I, you know, when I read the Bible, I'm like, what were they saying? Like, what, what, what are we singing this morning? And I'm like, oh, isn't it so good that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom? And, and I remember hanging out in certain atmospheres that those atmospheres always give birth to something. It doesn't matter. We, we've all given birth to something that we had no clue what we were doing, but we were in that atmosphere, whether it was abuse, whatever it was, and then it gives birth to it, and then you don't like it later when you could see. Because when you couldn't see, you thought it was normal. And so you're in this atmosphere, and you know you didn't like it, but you stood in it, and this atmosphere gave birth. And then now it's like I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, wow, this atmosphere breeds life. This atmosphere breeds joy and love and kindness and goodness. And I'm like, man, what if God was just like, yo, you know how y'all feel when y'all all come together? You could do that at home worshiping. You could do it in your car. You could do it in the park. Now, there's a beauty when we all come together. But imagine if everybody was doing it, and then when we came with our gifts and everybody was like stirred up because we just did it yesterday. Somebody did it in their office, somebody else in their car, and all of a sudden we all came together and we began to set an atmosphere. Whew. Man. Because I feel like when I, when I always think about God, I think about God going like this. And a little bit of him landing in every single person that exists. And the only way you could start seeing the fullness is when everybody starts connecting. And you can't do it without the other person. Even the one that you're like, ugh, you need them too. <laughs> you with me? Because they might be completely different, thinking of a different thing. And that's where the, the thing comes. But our common key is love and, our, 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 you know, it's Jesus, right? It, it's how we all come together to bring this harmony so, Father, today I pray that in this atmosphere, the veil which was <laughs> torn so that we could see, I, I, I just pray if there's an area of our life that we can't see yet, that, that you make it visible so that we could see according to what is in heaven. Give us a kingdom perspective. We love you, God. You are the most amazing thing. The most amazing person that has ever happened in my life, in this place, on the earth. God, you're just special. If I had 10,000 tongues, I could not thank you enough. believes with me say amen. amen 
Man, you guys, give an air high five or knuckle it out or <laughs> elbow. I don't know what people are doing. Come on, we could have a seat. Maybe you're at home. We're so glad that you've decided to join us. Come on. Wow, stuff is happening on the earth all over the place. Even though there's so many things, you know, I have friends in Florida, Caleb, and then they're just kind of, they had a prophetic weekend and they're still going. People are getting healed, all kinds of stuff is happening. It's kind of exciting. I see stuff just happening through the earth and, you know, I see Sean Foyt kind of doing his thing at the beaches and baptizing people and everybody singing and I'm like, man, this is crazy. It's like we're in the middle of the Bible, it seems like, you know. And uh, exciting, man. I, I, was, I was able to be with a guy on a Zoom call that, I uh, forget his name, dang it, ruined that one, but, you know, he's a, he's a news guy in Israel. He actually lives right there. He could see the wall and everything, and so somehow I wound up in a Zoom meeting with this guy, and he was telling me basically what was happening in Israel right now, and it was beautiful. You know, they just, they got... They're teaching the Bible in the schools. They're kind of, all that kind of returned. And like, they were, he was like, what if that is, you know, because out of, out of God's, out of there, it can, it can send a sonic boom and go everywhere. So it's not like, oh, it's not exciting. That's super exciting. Right? The mountains were given back to them. You know, I think it's Ezekiel 36 is what we're living. Like you say, like, what is, what's happening right now? It's Ezekiel 36. Go read it. You read it, and that's what's happening in Israel right now. That's crazy, man. That's so cool. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know about y'all, but I'm listening to that, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's exciting, even though it's crazy right now. Amen? So I don't know. I hope that got you excited. You know, I like seeing the living word. We, we, we decided, I decided that this week we were going to talk about the kingdom. And, you know, we're excited. You know, we launched two weeks ago, like in the middle of the pandemic. Of course, everybody's like, you think this is a good time? I'm like, it's always a good time. You know, we're, we're like, I'm the guy that's building the parachute on the way down. You with me? We're good. He, he'll build it. I do believe in planning. It's the new me. But I do like to take some risk and jump anyway, especially when it's for that. Souls and lives and I mean, when is the right time for that? You know, I didn't follow the church planting rules when I planted. Why would I follow them now? It kind of messed me up a little bit because we were going to launch a lot sooner, but we didn't because I had some of the new rules in my head and I had to like break out of the rule part. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't do that last time. I just started. And so that's what we did. And so right now, I think this past weekend, Get Wrapped Church on the south side of Houston gave away produce and milk and food and all kinds of stuff right in the middle of the hood out there amen and so you guys did that even though you were not there your prayers were heard your finances that's what it's going to right we're thinking that this year love fest is going to be one of the biggest ones we've ever had which is a little scary because i think the one we did at greens point was a little bit crazy you know when the cops are telling you hey what do we do you get a little nervous because <laughs> you're like, you're, we hired you to protect us. <laughs> it was like 5,000 people, people wrapped around the mall in Greens Point. It was just wild. You feel like you have lost control, right? It was a little bit crazy, but fun. Those go down in the books where you're like, that was fun. But at the moment, you're like, what do we do? <laughs> and I feel like that's who we're called to be, Get Rap. I feel like we're like David's. I feel like, you know, we, we go where nobody wants to go, and we look at a giant in the eyes, and we go, hey, we're here, sent by the Lord. <laughs> and so I'm excited about that. I'm excited, you know, just, just some great stuff is happening. And, um, okay, let me get into the message, because if not, there's so many great things that the list would go on. And so just keep praying. Um, I really believe some, we're, we're about to do something crazy in Houston. I kind of want to hit the streets really hard. So I'm thinking of bringing in teams and all kinds of stuff and just hitting it. In the middle of a pandemic? Exactly in the middle of a pandemic. Some of you are like, what? I mean, I, it's a win-win. If I, I, you know, it's a win-win. You just think about that for a minute. And so I wanted to talk to you today about the kingdom. I was thinking about the kingdom, and you know, I've been in this 
kingdom of God and kind of thinking about kingdom ways and thinking about what the problem is within, you know, church. Sometimes I see people like, you know, when they're in positions, they say stuff, but when they're not in positions, they don't serve the way they did and, you know, all this stuff. And I'm always seeing like, like, like just amongst the church, and I, I can say it because I came not raised or fashioned to be who I am. I don't even know how I wound up up here with the jacket and the shoes, you know? Like, I'm just here. And so I'm doing my best to do what God has called me to do. But it wasn't like I thought about, this is what I'm going to do, and then we're going to plant churches. By far, I was going to smoke marijuana, listen to reggae music, and sit on a beach for the rest of my life. That was the plan. I don't know if it was a good plan. Obviously, it wasn't. But, uh, you know, God had other plans. And so I came to Texas to take over the world and wanted to meet the greatest connect of all time. And I got connected with the biggest connect ever. Right? And so then for me, I just never understood. You know, I got saved and then I just never went back. So I've never understood it. I get it somewhat, but I feel like, man, when you... You know, when you, maybe, maybe, you know, I say sometimes I need to throw people in a pool, hold them down for a while. When they feel like their life's about to give, scream Jesus, and then they get it. You've just been saved, brother. It would change, think about it, it would change Christianity. People would understand salvation. Stick them in a closet, and they start sweating at the moment of thinking, I'm, I'm about to die. I open the closet, and you've just been saved. And people would change their perspective. They would not just think it's a few cool songs and... You know, I just always thought, even in prison, when I would read the Bible, I came out, I started sending emails to all these people. I did. I sent emails to like Kim Walker, everybody. I didn't know. I'll meet them soon. But I didn't know that, and I just thought like, hey, I was sending them emails. I said, there's this town. It's full of drugs. We need Jesus there. And so they would send me this list of stuff, and I'm like, whoa, okay, what the heck is this? And I didn't understand. Obviously, they, had, they needed gas and all that to get there. I, I understand now. I didn't understand then. I was like, charge! You know, get me Carrie Job on the line. You know, it's really what I thought. I, I'm clueless. All the pastors I would talk to, I would be like, think about it. I'll show up there, all these drug addicts. We got Carrie Job, Kim Walker, right? They're like, okay, crazy guy. I had a hole in the bottom of my shoe. My clothes were jacked up. So they definitely were looking at the outward going, what the hell's wrong with this guy? I'm thinking, we're going to give them Jesus. And so that really hasn't changed much. Except they, you know, my, my assistant's like, except for the clothing now. So now they look at the outward appearance and they don't think I'm that baddie. Because now they've seen uh, I'm standing the longevity of time. They're like, this guy's still going. What's going on here? They scratch their heads. And I get to give all the glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Because I definitely would not be doing anything that I'm doing today. But I was thinking about when I served the kingdom of darkness. Right? When I served the kingdom of darkness, I was thinking, uh, I felt like I had dominion. You know, because when we think about kingdom, we think about dominion uh, to govern. Or a king, right? You can't have a kingdom without a king. At that time, I was serving the kingdom of darkness. And so I was doing a word study and stuff. And when I looked up darkness, it said metaphorically the Bible talks about darkness meaning being ignorant so not only do we fight the devil the world your flesh most of our problems is is that we're ignorant ignorant of the right way living in unbelief and living dangerously uh says and being dangerously subject to wandering Ro uh, proverbs 4 19 says the way of the wicked is like darkness they do not know what makes them stumble because when you're living in the lie, you really think that the lie is true. I mean, everybody around you is doing it. Everybody's saying it. The movies that you watch, it's kind of crazy, right? Because you could watch a movie. When I was growing up, I watched all the crazy ones, right? I watched Scarface 5,432 times. I wanted the dream. I justified it in my head. I was ruled, my insides were ruled, and my desires were moved by the kingdom of darkness. The ignorant way of living. I had no clue that what I was doing was wrong. I went to church on Sundays. I just didn't read my Bible. But I went to church on Sundays. 
I just thought, hey, you know what? I've had this idea in my head. The only reason they're mad is because they can't tax the drugs that I'm selling. And that's what I believed. And, and I would have fought you tooth and nail on it too. I said, what's the difference between me and a doctor? I'm making them happy. They're partying because of me. They're having fun. And then I'd go put the little water on my head on Sunday. You know, needle it out. Five Our Fathers, three Hail Marys, two Act of Contritions, boom, kill somebody on Tuesday. <laughs> and not feel that bad about it. <laughs> Hoping he caught that is really what we did. And now I think there's no difference because there's a lot of us living certain ways where we can't really choose what we want. We live sometimes with the world's ideologies and thought patterns. And yet God is looking for a people who would make him king. What you don't know is killing you. If you're in darkness and you don't know something, you think what you don't know won't hurt nobody. No, what you don't know is killing you. When we know that we start to know Christ, the veil is torn and we begin to see and we call that light. I want to take you to Matthew 6, 33. Y'all all know it. It says, but seek first. Everybody say first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. In the Passion Translation, I'm going to read it in another translation. So above all, everybody say above all. So he leaves no room here for anything else. First and above all. He says, above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom. And the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. It says, then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Seek ye first. So somebody had told me a long time ago, he said, when you take care of God's people, God will always take care of you. And I've never forgotten that. And I'm always thinking when they say, hey, man, no matter where I went and the cats that I know that are living lives, they're loving their wife and all this is happening, they all seek first the kingdom. It cannot be coincidental. It just can't be. Now, there is a process and I understand there's maturity and fruit and all that. So we're not talking about that. We just know there's a difference between you going through something and you completely just destroying yourself. Big difference. And I was thinking about seeking first the kingdom. And I remember when I was in school, I was thinking about Bible school. The other school, I never thought about this. But I, uh, there's hope. And I was thinking about CSI. And I know that in CSI, I don't know if you ever watched that, you know. I stopped because I was doing like binges, you know, on CSI. You usually give one after the other. And I remember that in CSI, when they're trying to catch the person, they go and they call in a team. And they're seeking the evidence so they could catch and figure out the crime. And what they do is they send out a team first and they put the yellow tape. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is where we're going to search. This is what we're going to seek out. And they go in that yellow tape and a guy comes and he has a little bag and he finds a hair. Puts it in the bag, bags it, tags it, hair. Finds a piece of gum. Y'all seen it. An indenture of a molar bags to tag it that's gotta be horrible right 10 years later you get caught because you had a gum you, you had a tooth that looked like the thing of the gum I, I those shows trip me out and so all of a sudden you bag it tag it you put it there you find the next thing you bag it tag it they take it all and they put it under a lens and they begin to seek out the what what they have found so that they can get evidence so that they can properly take it before a courtroom and say you must have been there they try to find a credible witness. You must have been there because this belongs to you. And when the Bible talks about seeking ye first the kingdom, it means that we go through life looking and th through the lens of God's eyes and his thoughts because his ways are higher than our ways. And how he thinks and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he's always about, hey, doesn't matter what you go through in life, make sure you think first my perspective is what he's saying. 
and my righteousness. We know that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags, but we understand when Jesus died on the cross, we are now righteous. We can come boldly to the throne of grace because of what he has done. So when we accept him as Lord and he is king and we operate out of a kingdom realm, we begin to walk in all the blessings that he has for you. But here's the problem. You, any of your parents up in here? Oh, come on. Your parents and you, you got your house and you know what I'm saying? You got rules. And so the problem with kids nowadays is that they want to live with all your blessings but under their rules. They want to know, hey, hey, I'm going to tell you when I'm going to bed. I'm going to tell you, you know, what you need to buy. And I don't really like the couch color. And you're thinking to yourself, see, see, in my house, when you come to my house, if you're coming with some Jack Daniels, Jack has to stay outside because I don't drink. Now, I'm not going to judge you or nothing. You can come in still. We can kick it. I just don't drink Jack or any other drink, so that stays outside. And so you come in, and we're hanging out. You start packing the Newports or Marlboros, and I, mm, you can't smoke in my house. You can go outside, but not in my house. And so they're like, man, I could go right here in the, no, no, no. I could go in the patio, mm -mm. outside the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Preferably not anywhere in my lawn. <laughs> right over there. And you good. Here's, hey, let me see if I can find you a can of corn or something. <laughs> But not in my house. And you might say, man, pastor, that's kind of cold. But it really isn't. See, because in my house is my kingdom with my rules. And the, it's real easy. If you don't like my rules, then you just find another house. So I feel like when we look at the kingdom of God, see, we think Americanized, Like we think voting and we get a choice at what we're going to vote. And, and of course, some people, you might be listening to this and you're like, well, you know, that's, that's real legalistic. Well, it's actually not. It's actually not. Because see, what happens is that most people that start thinking that way is because they've been hurt here in this world. And all of a sudden they go here and they think everything you say, you got to obey and that's legalistic. No, no, no. I, I, I do it out of love. I don't, it's not like I have to. I, I get to hang out with the king. He saved my life. He gave me love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He gave me all these beautiful fruit, and they're not plastic either, like, boom, bananas. Mmm. When the other guy, all he gave me was plastic fruit. I mean, it was nasty. It always turned into something nasty. Are, are you with me? And so in God's kingdom, he's like, look, this is my kingdom. And I want you to live in my kingdom. And when you live in my kingdom, you're blessed beyond your furthest, beyond anything that you could hope, think, or imagine. Sometimes it's going to be tough. It doesn't mean, it doesn't take away the troubles. You just know you belong to a kingdom that you're backed by all the authority of heaven. And that's a good promise. So if I'm in your kingdom, I'm good no matter, you're good no matter what. Even at your day of death, you're still good. And it's like, what? We don't talk like that in church because people get offended. And I started thinking about the kingdom and the kingdom and the kingdom. And it's the kingdom. You know that these people, the Pharisees and them, when they were always talking to Jesus, they always thought about a king, external things. You know, pagans always thought about external things. Pharisees always thought about external things. Everything was on the outside. They thought a guy was going to come in a white horse and then have war. And he's talking to them. And you remember when he's like, the kingdom of God is at hand. And they're tripping out because they're looking around thinking, where? See, the fact was that the disciples had Jesus ruling and reigning in their hearts. It's amazing when you begin to talk like that because the people that don't have Jesus in their hearts, they're the ones that begin to get offended. But the ones that do understand because you're like, he reigns in my heart too. And the disciples knew exactly the kingdom of God is at hand. They knew, he, they knew, they followed Jesus. Wherever he wanted to go, they would follow. If he had to leave it all, they would still follow. So the question is, does 
Jesus Christ rule and reign in your heart? Let me ask you some questions and you, a- you answer them. When I need guidance, where do I go first? Whatever you go to first is what you trust. Do you seek his perspective first? Do you go to his word to see what it says? Right? When you're, not, when you're not sure, do you find somebody else who maybe has the word and you see fruit in their life? And you ask about the word? Do you get your counsel from God's word? Does God's view or truth matter to you? Those are good questions. It's the questions we don't really want to ask because we, we really just say, hey, live however you want and you're good. Repent on Sunday. Everything's fine. You're going to be good. Yeah, I do believe in grace and I do believe in mercy. I believe in all of that. But I also believe in, in, a, in a heavenly father who's not going to get mocked. Do you, do you go to him first? Remember when we were talking about prayer? I, I, I'm going to read you something. Because the Bible talks about devoting ourselves to prayer. In other words, the word devote is a compound word that means to be interactive and to show steadfast strength. It carries the idea that we're to be personally involved. We're to be interactive with God in prayer God sends his power as we actually obey him and not before I want you to think about that we said that prayer was exchanging wishes that when we would communicate see many communicate but few connect hey man what if only by your actions God was gonna tell you what you were saying to him you ever think of that I ask husbands all the time and wives, I go like, hey, not by what you say, but by your actions, what are you saying? And then they start thinking. And I say, Jesus was the ultimate communicator and connector. What did he do? He he left everything to selflessly come talk to you. And then he's like, how can I communicate love? Because I can tell them I love them all day long, but they're not going to really understand. I'll give my life. (laughs) <laughs> you think, man, that's crazy. No, no, no. He never asked you to do something that he did not do himself. So he gives his life. And then he says, I loved you first so that you could love me back. And, and I think about these things all the time because I'm thinking kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And we're the type of people that we want to pick and choose what we want to follow God in. And it's usually about us. Come on. It's usually about us. We come to church with our problems to give them to God. And yes, he, he tells you to come. He has to cares. But the reality is we come for him. To serve him. To serve other people. To build the kingdom. Everything Jesus talked about was the kingdom. I know that you, most people come to church just so they could get to heaven. But they sang it. You sang it this morning. Here as in heaven your will be done your kingdom come okay you forgot basically what you were saying is you want everything that's in the kingdom to come to the earth and and in the earth how do you think that's going to happen remember you were made out of dirt what if you're really saying within me I want heaven's realm within me. That's why he adds the rest unto you. But we do it backwards. We, we, it's about me. And when it's about me gets frustrating, we want to add in Jesus' name in the back end, now do something. He doesn't work like that. That's an outer work. He's an, it's an inside job. It's an inside job. He wants to go inside. And he wants to give you heaven and expand your capacity and understanding and the perspective of heaven. So that then you can do that on the outside and create atmospheres of heaven on the earth through you and I. Look at your neighbor and say, through you. Look at somebody else and say, through you too. 
It's incredible because when we pray, we exchange wishes, right? So you have a dialogue with God. You learn his will. You say, God, this is how I feel. He tells you how he feels about it and what he desires. And prayer does not just work like magic. It's almost like you exchange these things. And as you're praying, your tongue, which is like a rudder of a ship that is exchanging wishes with God, begins to speak things and walk. Where you get the power and the presence of God is when you begin to walk in the word. What we do is we want to bring the world into the word rather than the word into the world. That's what we do all the time. Come on, we're guilty of it. You got to catch when you do these things. Because it's in the kingdom realm that miracles happen. A miracle can happen now. Only in the realm of heaven. But if we can have heaven on earth, you step into things that you thought you could never do because of his grace. But it's the atmosphere of heaven that lies within you. Come on. Let's read Matthew 5 real quick. Come on. This is Jesus' kingdom manifesto. Come on. This is like, this is what heaven looks like. This, he's saying, look, he's talking to his disciples right here. And, and this is a kingdom perspective. You need to have Matthew 5, the B attitudes. You know, we hear the little joke with the B attitudes. So have that attitude, have this attitude, right? This is the mind of Christ. This is a kingdom thing. Let's, let's read it. He said, Jesus saw the cross. He went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, the disciples uh, came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I don't know about you, but I want the kingdom of heaven to be mine. So what is he saying? You have to be bankrupt. You have to be from a place where you're so dependent, where you know my spirit, without the Holy Spirit, I'm nothing. I need the Holy Spirit every day of my life, in every situation, for every decision, in everything that I do, in my parenting, come on, in my marriage, come on, in my finances. I need a kingdom perspective in every area of my life. And God, if I was to wander, would you pull me back because of the perspective that you've placed on the inside of me? That's what that... that, that Y'all follow me. That's the first thing he says. Like, yo, you need me. <laughs> you say, well, I, I, I go to church. And like, I, I tell him I need him. No, no, no. When, when, when you, I go, man, I love baby Ruth. Sometimes when we bump heads a little bit, I don't want her to go with me. But I love her so much that I'm like, you want to come? Y- y'all ever did that? I don't know if you're in a relationship like that. But I'm like, oh, God. I'm like upset. But at the same time, I want her to go with me because I love her. But the flesh is telling me, like, forget her. You know, leave her at home. You know? And I'm conflicted. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So what do I do? I go to God's perspective. And I put my mind like, he doesn't want me to do that. I go against my will. See, it's never to break the, listen, listen, listen. When you break a horse, when you break a horse. Now, I'm not a cowboy, but God gave me this revelation. Maybe somebody will take me, you know, and teach me this stuff. It happened already with a farmer, so why not a cowboy? And so what happens is you break the horse of his will. You don't break him of his strength and speed. You want him to still be a horse. And that cowboy would ride his back. I felt like urban cowboy right there. I was just like straight up. I was about to go into character and... So you get on the, 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 the horse's back, and when it breaks, what it does is it becomes submissive to the will of the guy who broke him. And some of us has to understand that your life is not going to change just because you come to a church or a conference or you bought every book. It's about listening to the perspective of heaven from whatever you're gathering from and then choosing to follow his will while your will breaks. Y'all with me? Man, I'm getting excited up here. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, right? For those who feel sorrow for the things that God feels sorrow for. If it hurts God's heart, then it should hurt yours. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. That's what I just told you about the horse, the meek, right? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Some of us, we have to understand that that same mercy you're not showing to somebody else, you need it too. You're going to need it too. Mercy, what you (laughs) should. Grace, a gift, unmerited favor, right? A gift given to you. Mercy, this is what you were going to get. 
And I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you, you really should have got this, but I'm not going to give it to you because last month I needed it and God blessed me and he gave me a break. I'm going to give you a break. Y'all with me? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. You know why, right? Okay, because I think I've, I've said this, where mayonnaise, or two things that do not mix, uh, contain uh, an emulsifier, which is an egg. And basically what it does is the egg and mayonnaise brings the two things together that would not mix, and it brings them together, and therefore you got mayonnaise. What Jesus did was he reconciled us back to the Father. In our fallen state, he came and he became the emulsifier or the egg and mayonnaise and brought the two things together. Now, blessed are the peacemakers. Ooh, we don't like this one because it takes, it takes patience. That means that you're going to go in between a conflict and you're going to really give a perspective of really what is right, not who's right. And then, and, but when people see that, they see Jesus. That, that's, what, that's why. They see Jesus when people see that. When you can step into something that's chaotic and not let the water go in and not get chaotic with it, but sit down and be like, hey, let's talk about this. Come on. You're blessed. And they'll know that you're sons of God. You ever do that? You ever get challenged to do that or you just blow up too? Come on. I know it's possible. I mean, if you've been in our church for a long time and you're definitely like a worship or a leader or something and you've been here, you know we've sat in some of those. So I could preach this with confidence. It's what the son, it's what the son does. He just does that, man. He's able to bring peace into situations where you can't. Blessed are those who or persecuted because of righteousness, because of righteousness. Not, you know, I hear a lot of people, oh, they're hating on me. No, ain't nobody hating on you. <laughs> like two people. <laughs> and you want to put a post and everything, like, come on. <laughs> so persecuted, why? Because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So good. Because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you. That's a real hard one. Because of me, right? So a lot of times family, co-workers, come on. They say all this Jesus stuff. You take it away, dude. <laughs> they say all this stuff, right? They start thinking that you're thinking stuff that you're not even thinking. You think you're better than everybody else. Uh, no, I never had that thought. <laughs> You're with me? They start because you don't go around certain things or you just choose not to. But the reality is that it says here that we're going to be okay. So we've got to learn to kind of like, ah, they don't know any better. Forgive them for they don't know what they do. Are you with me? The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. So whoever follows Jesus <clears throat> will never walk in ignorance. You will always know the way. And I know sometimes it gets scary. Sometimes it gets scary. Uh-oh. <laughs> you, can't, you can't plan that. Miss Debbie, you can't plan that. Sometimes it gets scary, but the good thing is that when you're holding on to the hand of the one who knows everything, the beginning and the end and everything in the middle, you have nothing to worry about. The antidote for worry is to seek ye first the kingdom. That's the antidote because he talks about it before and after. As long as you're seeking the kingdom, you're fine. Are you with me? Man, God is good. I, I'm, I'm going to close right now. I feel like I need to close. I'm going to close. I want to share a story though. I'm not the originator of the story, though I would like to be. This is a really good story. This is my man, Pastor Tony Evans. With a Puerto Rican twist. <laughs> you got to throw it, you know what I'm saying? You got you to put it in there. So there's a story of a man in the desert. 
And while he was in the desert, he wouldn't have lived much longer without water. He saw a shack and he went to a pump that had a jug of water next to it. So he grabs the jug of water. And when he's about to take a sip or a drink, he sees a note on it. It says, the pump will give you all the water you need. But in order to prime the pump, you have to pour all the water in the jug. Oh, I love this. Kind of one of those movies. They need the suspense in the back. Think about it. You're thirsty. You feel like you're going to die. You're in the middle of the desert. You finally see water. You grab the water. It splashes a little. And it, you see a big old note, and it says to pour the water, all of it, in the jug, in the in the pump. So now he's in a dilemma. If if I don't drink the water, right? He begins to think, and he says, if I pour all the water in the pump, and nothing happens, I won't have water, and I'll lose my life. On the other hand, I'll have all the water I would ever need. It's the question we ask ourselves. If I give up everything, will I ever have anything? Ain't that what we're saying? Because it's an upside down kingdom. God is so, he's just so smart. He's like, give it all to me. Because he knows when you're holding on to things, you will never follow him completely. You never will. You can say all the right Jesus things. It's in those difficult moments when you want to walk away. It's always about the heart. It's always about the pump. And so here, he's in a dilemma, man. And he's like, he's like, he, he, he begins to sweat, right? You got to think about it. You got to put yourself in this picture. He begins to sweat. He has the water. He's looking at the water. He's looking at the pump. He's looking at the water. He's thinking, man, I could die. I'm not going to have anything. Life's going to suck. This guy wants me to give it all up, everything. That's how we feel when we, you know, those who have been walking with God, you're like, this is exciting. But those in the beginning are like, you're holding on to that one thing. And, and, and we think it's always to, it, it's to break your will, your desires. He's trying to, uh, give me that. Give me that that keeps leading you back to the same stupid things you keep complaining about. Give me that. I got something better. And so the story goes on. He begins to sweat. He starts to pour all the water in the pump. And as the pump gets full, he waits. And nothing happens. He begins to sweat. He sees water drop another drop and another drop and the drops start to go and they start to flow and before you know it it's like Niagara Falls baby it's just falling out of there water everywhere the man starts drinking water he has so much water that he goes takes a bath come on somebody this dude is swimming in water now he's like yes best decision he ever made Out of the mouth of babes. Hey, the Lord's like, if nobody will shot him down, I'll, I'll put it in a kid. He's like, yeah. So you get all the water for the rest of your days, little Houston. Don't ever let him forget that. See, I believe when God has a word for somebody and you grab a hold of it for the rest of your days, that's your word. And you step into an atmosphere that other people don't receive. Before you know he has a water company. Come on, somebody. How did you get the water company out of a word? I was a ye young child. And as the man was sharing the story and the sweat came down from his brow, I amen, because I knew that the water would come. So therefore, the Lord has blessed me with water everywhere.
some of us are half-stepping with Christ. We want to live in two worlds. See, you can have the world if you want it, but you can't have the world of God. You have to make a choice. That's where it becomes so complicated, right? Because we're like, we feel like that guy. Hey, you know, oh, the end of the story, the guy goes and he's like, it's, there's a note that says, please fill the jug of water again and please place the note. And so he goes, fills the water, and he's like, put all the water in the pump. Believe me, it works. Do I have any believers here who are living a life, listen, listen to me, that is beyond your walk. You, you, have, you understand when I talk about peace, love, joy. Anybody here, just raise your hand. There's nothing to be ashamed about, right? That, that's, that gives hope to the other one. Like, wait a minute, these people are living like that? How come I ain't? Maybe you haven't poured all the water in the pump. Maybe you keep pouring a little bit. And the pump needs all the water. It says, if you lose your life, you shall find it. And there's people telling you, believe me, it works. Now it's your turn. Or maybe you're at home and you're finally at that place. And you're like, man, I don't know what to do. And then you read the little note and somebody says, believe me, it works. Everyone on your feet. And I'm hearing the music and for some reason I have this weird accent coming. When I was a young child. It's 11, 11. I, I, I'm, I, you know, I believe in numbers. Either it says Juan, 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 Juan. You know what 11, 11. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It, it, it's the truth. I, I, I couldn't make this stuff up. I didn't know what I was going to do. And the Lord was speaking to me. And one day I looked at, it was the, I think it was in the calendar. It was on 11, 11. It was on 11, 11. That's when it was. It was November 11 of 2011. And that's when I made the choice. And you know why I made the choice? Because I felt like God was saying to me, Juan, 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 Juan. True story. Here we are today. I was like, there's no way. This dude's telling me Juan, 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 Juan. And he's asking me, would you do it? Now some of y'all are like, that's crazy. But here I am. And I just looked at the clock and it said 11, 11. And I don't think this time he was saying Juan, 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 Juan. Or maybe. But what I really caught from it was the 11 is the number of transition. And I feel some of you have been on a side where you have been holding on to things. And sometimes you get frustrated because the only, thing you, the only way you could get that that you're believing for is through a heavenly realm. It's through operating out of kingdom principles. And so you get frustrated and you keep coming to church and you hear people happy and you see your friends smiling and you're like, man, this sucks. I'll try next week. And you think that when you walk in, this fairy dust is going to fall on your head and you're going to walk out and you're going to be like, oh, man. And that's not really what happens. It's when I connect with God. It's when he touches my heart. And I make him Lord of my life. He becomes king. And in a kingdom, there's no, like, choice. Like, you're grabbing it out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could choose, but not in his kingdom. In his kingdom, it's what he says. He's like, this is what I want you to do. Trust me. It's the best thing you'll ever do. So you walk and you trust despite what it looks like. And today he's talking to your heart. Come on. You've been going back and forth, back and forth. That's what this message is. You've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You keep bringing the world into, your, into the word, your own opinions, your own ideologies. We're going to have some people in the youth room on the other side. They're going to be there, some prayer partners. And if you need prayer, they want to pray with you. If today you're like, man, you're talking to me. I'm tossed to and fro. I keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I can't make up my mind. I keep hearing you talk week after week about all these things that 
that blessings and bless this and today I, I heard I heard what it is to be blessed I, I heard you read it in Matthew 5 and today it's speaking to my heart and today I'm gonna make a decision and if it, that's you making that decision today I want you to raise your hand high in the sky thank you so much for your honesty thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much second question there was a lot of you walking it out in the kingdom you were doing all the kingdom stuff and something happened in your life and it just put you in a whirlwind and you're like man God you know what I'm done with playing I'm stepping back into the things of the kingdom I want you to raise your hand high in the sky thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so much for your honesty Heavenly Father, we pray today for every single person who raised their hand. I pray that any person at home will raise their hand, that you meet them right there where they're at, that your word will connect with their heart so that you would communicate to them how much you love them. Father, may they respond as Moses did. See, Moses, oh God, Moses responded before God even spoke. He, he showed him light and he went to the light and then he spoke to him. And for some of y'all, God is waiting for you to make the move so that he could speak to you. Father, I pray that this is sealed by way of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, make some noise for the word. Amen. Is it not incredible? You know, thinking about that story, I feel like, and you can take your seats at this moment. I feel like the Lord was talking to many of us about how we've been looking so much for resources, but he's asking you to look for the source instead of just a resource. Amen. So if that word touched your heart, I just encourage you highly, if you feel like it's stirring up in your spirit, to make your way towards that way. Mr. Adolph, if you could raise your hand, he's right over there. That is where the overflow and prayer room is going to be at towards that direction. So if you want to make your way that way whenever you'd like. That would be amazing. Again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so excited for what God is going to do in your life. If it's your first time here, make sure you visit the first time guest to welcome tent towards the left. Also, if you have tithes and offerings, there are envelopes right in front of you. And there are robots to my left and to my right, if you see them right there. And they are able, they're the place where you put your offering. But let me go ahead and pray for the service and pray for you guys and dismiss. Amen. Father, thank you so much. Thank you because you're such a great God and you're such a merciful God. And Lord, I thank you because you have such an amazing plan for our lives, such an amazing blessing, Lord. I pray, God, that you help us break our will, Lord, and let your will be done in our lives, Lord. I pray, God, that we surrender and posture our hearts to give it completely to you, Lord. We thank you for this service. We thank you for this word. I pray that you bless every single person that you would keep them safe and healthy lord in jesus mighty name and we all said amen amen god bless y'all